What's up? I made a video about the fighting types of Advance OU, and now I'm making this video in the exact same vein about the fire types of Advance OU, because I believe they have had the exact same journey. In old Advance, fighting types and fire types were not considered very good. They weren't seen very often. Sure, they were offensively potent. They were threatening and tough to switch into. However, they were difficult to make work consistently, because their defensive qualities were tougher to make use of, given how much they were vulnerable to. Not just how much they were vulnerable to, but how many common, powerful strategies they were vulnerable to. You could check them without really thinking about it. Uh, so it, for fighting types, it was the case of being vulnerable to sand and spikes. Like, oh yeah, this Machamp is kind of tough, but you know I've got my sand and my spikes out, and you know I might take a hit, but I'll also hit it a couple times and it'll go down. And uh, with fire types, they have a similar vulnerability. Uh, in their case, it's uh, vulnerability to a lot of common attacks. I mean, when you're weak to all of Surf and Thunderbolt, Rock Slide, Earthquake, you know, to varying degrees, then that's tough. Uh, especially because none of the fire types are really that fast or that bulky. So, uh, like, Tyranitar is also weak to Earthquake and Surf, but it's also incredibly bulky. So, uh, and it has an incredible move pool. Fire types tend to have a more limited move pool. So, they're... You know, their use is limited uh, in Old Advance, of course, because it's tough to get them to be consistent with all these weaknesses and this frailty and these limited move pools. And, I mean, it feels like you're fighting an uphill battle. Like, yeah, you have a stab move that threatens Celebi and Metagross and Skarmory and Jirachi, but at the same time, you can't exactly, you know, waltz into these Pokemon for free, and you are also struggling with so many other staples. A Tyranitar, Waters, which is a lot of Pokemon, uh, uh, Salamence, Dugtrio, Aerodactyl, Blissey, Flygon, so uh, even Zapdos, even. So it's uh, they were tough to make work. However, just like Fighting types, in the last couple of years of Advance, the Fires have really risen up and established themselves as metagame staples. Now. I have covered some of these fire types in different videos on the channel before, so when we're gonna still be going over the OU viable fires, but when it comes time to the Pokemon, comes time to cover the Pokemon that I've covered before, then I am going to refer most of the details to uh, the other videos I have on them, uh, so as to not just regurgitate those. Uh, of course, we'll still be going over generally what it does, but for further details I will let you consult those other videos. Anyway, so uh, you might be thinking, well why do you uh, want to make a video if you've already uh, about the fires if you've already covered them in different places? Well, I think the fires have a unique and interesting enough place in advance to deserve their own video. So uh, that's why I wanted to make it. It's just like the fighting types, you know, previously thought, oh yeah, it's pretty threatening, but you know, not really that great. And now, now, I mean, we have Moltres in OU. There, uh, for, for Moltres, there was never a fire type in advanced OU, like a genuine uh, OU Pokemon. So uh, that's, that's pretty amazing. So yeah, so these are the OU viable fire types and let's start with Moltres. Now, the video I'm gonna refer you to is this video uh, about how Moltres, all links uh, shown in the, uh, all these videos will be linked in the description. Uh, so Moltres is uh, the most prominent case because it actually went from being BL to being OU. So uh, again, I will leave the history and the details of Moltres's rise to this video so I don't wind up leaving something out. But let's take a look at why Moltres is good. Since Moltres is plagued by, you know, a lot of the other flaws that uh, other fire types have. Uh, let's look at its speed. Its speed is pretty good, and, but it's not amazing. Oh, before I uh, before we go on, I want to mention that the sets I have on these Pokemon are not the only ones. We'll go get into the sets uh, later on, but this is not, you know, the final or only Moltres set. So, uh, yeah, Moltres' speed, you know, it's good, uh, even quite good, but it's not amazing, so, you know, it's it's not going to be and blazing by 
uh, Aerodactyl and Starmie and Zapdos and uh, all those guys. Uh, I mean, it has agility, but it also has a limited move pool. I mean, it, it really does only have Fire Grass for coverage. So, so why does Moltres succeed? Its speed isn't that great. You know, agility takes up a move slot. It's already strapped for moves. It uh, doesn't have, you know, incredible coverage. And uh, it's, you know, weakness-laden typing, you know, holds it back. I mean, yeah, it's immune to Earthquake, which is also great for being immune to Spikes and Arena Trap. But, you know, a lot of Pokemon that use Earthquake also use Rock Slide. So it's tough to switch in. It's also weak to Electric and Water. And, you know, it's not the bulkiest thing in the world, especially because it doesn't heal in Sand. So what makes Moltres so dangerous? Well... Moltres has a huge special attack stat. It is the highest of all of the fire types, so it hits really, really hard. It's the same special attack stat, yeah, special attack stat as Zapdos, and in fact, it, it's flamethrower, or it hits even harder with its fire stat potentially than Zapdos, because Zapdos um, just about never runs thunder, and Moltres is free to run fire blast or even overheat, which even Zapdos' thunder can't match. So it hits really hard, first of all. Second of all, it has Will-O-Wisp. Will-O-Wisp is not a TM in Gen 3, so not every fire type gets Wisp. So, like, Charizard, Blaziken, Camera, they don't get Wisp. Uh, they'd really like it if they did, but they don't. So, Wisp is a unique on Moltres, and it's, it's kind of redefined uh, team building. Since before Moltres, then you could say, oh, well, my uh, specially defensive Celebi will absorb Will-O-Wisps for my team. And then you face Moltres, and it's like, well, you know, I can't really absorb a will wisp from Moltres. That's not too great. So, uh, it, it has redefined team building in that way. And uh, But you're wondering, how does it get on the field? Well, Metagross does not run Rock Slide too often. And even if it does run Rock Slide, it doesn't want to exactly go spamming it. You know, it doesn't exactly do much to water switch-ins. So, Moltres reverses momentum on Metagross like nothing else. So something like Zapdos can switch into Metagross, right? But it doesn't Oko it. Part of why Metagross is so good is that it can't be Oko'd by nearly anything. I mean, max HP and like 12 defense always lives Adam and Dugtrio. So it's really hard to KO from full. But Moltres, you know, Fire, Stab Fire is the one, is unique in this regard because, you know, on the physical side, you're, you're not KOing uh, Metagross almost ever. I mean, bulkier sets can live even like Choice Band Flygon, which is crazy. So, but a Moltres, I mean, you know, effortlessly just wipes it out with flame, preferably Fire Blast for you know bulkier variants. But yeah, just uh, reverses the tide on Metagross like nothing else. Because you know, Zapdos can switch in, but you still have to fear that explosion. With Moltres, you come in on Mash or EQ, and you're good. Uh, Metagross is running from you, or it stays in and dies. Uh, so it hits really hard. It has, it has, it's got good bulk. You know, it's not taking hits, not taking uh, rock slides, of course, but it can take, the, it's not going to fold it like a Gengar Thunderbolt. And uh, it can take a couple mashes from Metagross as well. And uh, Fire Flying is also great typing because it has a quadruple resistance to grass. There's a lot of HP grasses flying around, you can pivot into that. And uh, the Fighting Resist, I mean, we talked about the rise of fighting types. I mean, being able to pivot into those moves, as well as, you know, the common Brick Breaks that are uh, common on non-fighters then that's really useful. So Moltres has a lot of really nice resists, and it comes in and it threatens really hard. Because Will-O-Wisp is so difficult to switch into, because Roar makes it uh, makes it even tougher to switch into, you think, okay, well, I'll take a hit with T-Tar with spikes and it'll hurt, but I'll chase the Moltres out and do damage in return. Or same with Blissey, and then you just get roared out. And uh, then you, you know, your Metagross or your Celebi or your Skarmory get dragged in and you're in for another reign of terror. So Roar can be really nasty. Whereas Moltres can have flexibility. I personally really like Overheat because it lets you deal with uh, faster Calm Mind, Jirachi, and Celebi after a boost. It hits really, really hard as opposed to letting them just blow by you one-on-one. -on -one. So Overheat is really good. And Fire Blast is great over Flamethrower, of course. Uh, some players like Agility. But basically, Moltres is uh, very simple. As long as you have, as long as you have fire and grass on your Moltres, you know, some people don't like to even ditch Willowis because yeah, it's nice, but you want to be spamming your fire move, so they'll do like flamethrower, HP grass, roar, overheat, stuff like that. It, it's flexible. So yes, its move pool is limited, but it's it hits so hard that it really uh, that it it hits so hard it manages to hit the field enough to where it's worth it. Yeah, you, you can't just slap Moltres on and expect no repercussions. I mean, you're going to be scared of things like... Uh, oh, speaking of Aerodactyl, I should mention Protect is really nice on it. 
because uh, you scout Aerodactyl, you scout Choice Band Men, it's, uh, it's really nice. You, you uh, check booms from Snorlax, uh, yeah. I should mention that without Will-O-Wisp, you are going to be completely walled by Flygon. That's something to consider. And it also uh, cripples Salamence really nicely. Not that Salam, but the nice thing is, is that those Pokemon are not immovable, especially offensive Flygon and definitely offensive Salamence. They really don't want to be switching into your Flamethrower, which is part of why Moltres is uh, so dangerous. Moltres is so strong that a lot of time you just spam your fire move. And a lot of time you spam your fire move and switch, which is why I like leading off with overheat sometimes too. And you just, uh, you click your stab, you know, against your Metag against Metagross and something gets hit really hard no matter what. I mean, even if they have Blissey, then they're going to be vulnerable to your, uh, the spikes that Moltres is just about always paired with. So, uh, Moltres has redefined uh, building in the tier. Uh, partially because of Will-O-Wisp. I mean, if it was just Fire Grass, then, I mean, that's when we get to Charizard, we're going to go over. Uh, just Fire Grass is a lot easier to deal with. Uh, you know, things like uh, Salamence and Flygon. And Will-O-Wisp really, you know, pushes it because it's a... Pr and it also means that uh, even Snorlax... You can stay in on Snorlax feasibly one-on-one -on -one and just irrevocably cripple it. And that, uh, that gives you an easier time. Uh, that gives you... Uh, more flexibility and maneuvering around it and weakening their special sponge for Moltres' sake. Like basically if you have a Moltres on Snorlax 101 you can feasibly stay in and wisp it and cripple it and then that makes things even easier for you late game. Not to mention Snorlax really doesn't want to be taking that wisp so. Oh uh, yeah, wisp is big and Moltres is really powerful and it's got a good speed tier. A lot of advance, like the more offensive guys, like even the fast variants of Tar, Metagross, Swampert, Suicune, then uh, Moltres blitzes by them pretty nicely. I like to run some more bulk, but uh, you go down to like Heracross, Suicune speed, and you're out running a lot of stuff. I mean, fast Cloisters, uh, defensive Selbies, uh, and I think my preferred spread is uh, this, if I'm remembering correctly, for Gengar. Uh, Overheat also helps against bulky Gengar. It's really nice. So... Uh, the Super Speed F1 still lives uh, with Sand, but like the less bulky ones just drop. Uh, with sand most of the time. So, I mean, you look at the list of OU Pokemon and you see a lot of Pokemon that are really scared of of uh, Moltres. The truest counter is Milotic, not just because it has Refresh, because, I mean, you would think, yeah, Blissey, right? Well, uh, well, Blissey teams are less likely to be entirely equipped for spikes, whereas Milotic tends to be so vulnerable to spikes that a lot of teams tend to go all out with, uh, you know, doing, making absolutely sure that they don't lose the spikes. Uh, those teams have fallen out of fashion a bit, mainly because they are not super reliable. Like, the Magneton Claydol stuff is just walked all over by Cloyster, which is why Moltres and Cloyster is such a great combination, in, uh, actually. So, that that stuff has, uh, you know, kind of fallen out of the metagame. It's less reliable. And that's given Moltres a bit of a boost, because it means, yeah, okay, Milotic might show up, but it's less likely that Milotic shows up with just like a pure anti-spikes army. It's like, I might not win, but I won't lose to spikes. That kind of mentality has kind of died out, which is a good thing in my opinion. So, Moltres is the, uh, Milotic is the hardest counter because it refreshes off Will-O-Wisp and, but you know, if you manage to get your spikes down, which is very doable, then even Milotic uh, will be able to handle it. Uh, funnily enough, Moltres is actually a pretty good check to itself. I mean, you don't want to be switching into Fire Blasts and Flamethrowers, but, you know, you can um, soak up a Will-O-Wisp without being hit by spikes. You know, things like uh, Blissey don't even like switching into Will-O-Wisp with spikes down. It's a very safe move. So, uh, and uh, even if you, you know, Flamethrower and Blissey comes in with spikes up, then it has to soft wheel, then you can roar and, you know, potentially get some more stuff going. You know, chase out Swampert. You gotta have that HP grass, by the way. You can't not slam Swampert and uh, hit T-Tar and, you know, pressure waters. So, yeah, you look at the OU tier list, and a lot of Pokemon do not like switching into Moltres at all. So, it's a it's a perfect encapsulation of why Fire is such a devastating offensive type. Uh, you, you need some you need the power behind it, for sure, which, which is why I advocate Modest Moltres. I think the speed from going timid is not, n not anywhere near worth the drop in power. And I, I do advocate Overheat a lot, so I'm going to put it here. So, Amoltres is the purest form of just power, but it's also probably the most well-rounded Pokemon overall because in addition to its power, it's also uh, bulky. I mean, like, Charizard has the same typing as Moltres, but it doesn't have the same bulk, you know, on, on, uh, 
on either side. You see the difference between its HP, defense, and uh, special defense. A uh, same special defense, but you know, much lower HP. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so Moltres is uh, very well rounded, very dangerous. Uh, just the right move pool, and it will. If you use it uh, again, I re refer to this video if you want to try out a team with it, if you want to see it in action, that kind of thing. So. Uh, I've already talked about it more than I intended to. So yeah, Moltres is the defining fire type, and that's why it is of Advance OU, and that is why it is the only fire type in OU. Uh, very unique place, very glad to see it rise up. And, god, that's, uh, that happened in 2019, and we're in 2021 now, so I mean, it's the real deal. I mean, it was the real deal back then, but now it's, it's just a part of OU now, and I think that's great. Now we go on to Charizard. Now the video I'll refer you to, refer you to for Charizard is this video about Undisputed's Charizard Breloom team, which was a major force in popularizing Charizard. Uh, it wasn't the only team to use Charizard, but it was a big one in making people see, oh, this this thing uh, is pretty easy to fit on a lot of good teams. So uh, Charizard is like Moltres. It's got, but it's got some uh, major advantages. Now the Biggest thing is that it's a lot frailer. Uh, most notably, whereas Moltres can come into a Metagross Mash a couple times, then Charizard can really only safely do it once, maybe twice, depending on the Metagross variant. However, it still has that Earthquake immunity, you know, Spikes immunity, uh, you know, doesn't get Arena Trapped, all that fun stuff. So it is like a. It's also weaker, which you know, by a pretty large margin. But. It's uh, also got some great, great tools over Moltres. It's got the speed. The base 100 speed is really nice. And while it personally pains me to go plus speed on Charizard, just because I think it's so... Its weakness kills me. You know, HP Grass bounces off Swampert. However, you know, if Salamence can get by, which has, you know, basically the same special attack, then Charizard can as well. So I don't mind it. I do think that uh, plus special attack Charizard is worth considering on certain teams, you know, teams that are good against offensive Zapdos in particular. And the power boost is big, such as against especially defensive Zapdos and you know breaking through waters and uh, weakened Titar and whatnot. And uh, especially when you're spamming fire and something like a uh, Salamence comes in, you I think you really value that extra power there. But I do recognize the importance of the speed and letting you potentially speed tie against things like Jirachi and Celebi. So. Uh, or Jirachi in particular, because you outspeed offensive Celebi because they run HP Fire. So that is a, that is definitely a major point in uh, Zard's favor. Uh, I should also mention that Moltres, uh, in you know, it checks itself pretty decently, but it checks Charizard even better because uh, it can switch into HP Grass and Focus Punch, and uh, Charizard is much weaker, and Moltres hits it back harder in return. So anyway. So, uh, the speed is one thing. Blaze is another thing. You know, Charizard becomes stronger than Moltres at low HP. And that's something really unique about Charizard, is that, you know, Moltres kind of likes its HP hide, so it can, you know, take that one surf from, you know, Suicune if it really comes down to it. Or it can switch into a couple of Metagross Mashes. Charizard almost likes switching into that Metagross Mash and, you know, getting knocked down to Blaze. Because then it becomes really strong. So it's Fire Blast just start dropping stuff. So, uh, oh, I f sorry, I forgot to mention the alternate uh, Moltres set. So this is the standard Moltres set. You use it on Spikes teams and Sand, and you're really offensively pressuring. But sometimes it likes to run uh, Sunny Day t on uh, Sunny Day Morning Sun, uh, Fire Stab usually Flamethrower, Flamethrower Wisp Morning Sun Sunny Day, and you use this on teams that really like clearing Titar Sand. Uh, for the benefit of something like Call Mine Rest Suicune. I think that's the best uh, beneficiary of this support. And it's a lot more specific to fit, but it's also a niche. And that is a really irreplaceable niche. That is, you know, that that makes more, that makes Moltres even more well-rounded. Uh, because it's not just an offensive battering ram with some defensive utility. It can uh, fulfill that role really nicely. It can, you know, just go outright defensive and it can uh, provide some real support. So, anyway... Yeah, so uh, I was inspired to think of that because there's an alternate. There, there are a couple vari. There are, actually there are a lot of variations on Charizard, but we're gonna start with this standard. Uh, I I don't think beat up is the standard necessarily, but it's been seeing a lot of use lately, and it's another unique thing Charizard does. So, so yeah, the speed is unique. The uh, blaze is really unique. You know, it, it I it, that is really a, a great. Just being able to turn eating that damage from that attack to your advantage. Suddenly your Fire Blast, you know, Salamence really doesn't want to switch in, Zapdos, etc. 
And, you know, in those offense-on-offense on offense games, and that does make a big difference, uh, the speed. Uh, so, you know, it's worth considering. I just uh, tend to like plus special attack. On the right team, if you can handle those other 100s, like if you have Blissey or Dugtrio or Aerodactyl, then I think it's definitely worth considering. Anyway, Zard. Other advantage, Focus Punch. This is a big one. You know, whereas Moltres tends to rely more on Will-O-Wisp and Spikes, and uh, Charizard can really threaten uh, Zar, or uh, sorry, Titar and Blissey, you know, to a lesser extent Snorlax, uh, all on its own. So that is really big. So that's why the old standard on Zard was sub, just to make sure you uh, manage to hit your target. You get that sub up for the focus punch on Tar, uh, so you don't get pivoted around. You know, sw so they don't switch uh, in, so they don't switch uh, Zapdos in on HP Grass or Focus Punch stuff like that. However, Charizard has a lot of really good coverage options, which is why it kind of got abandoned. So. Yeah, and uh, those coverage options are also really unique and I think really cool. So that's what we're going to examine. So sub is of course also fine because you know if you can't switch into a Metagross Mash or you know various you know, psychics or an HP fires and whatnot to knock you into Blaze, then you can just sub and manually knock yourself down to Blaze. So one of the nice things that Blaze does is let you beat Gengar one on one if it Thunderbolts. But uh, we've seen this in several tour games. And uh, I think, actually, this video in the description, then there's a tournament game uh, where this team was used, where that exact scenario arises. Uh, so again, refer to that video in the description. But uh, w if Gengar Ice Punches, then you won't get knocked into Blaze, and then you're in Thunderbolt range. So with Substitute, then you could potentially say, oh, if you're going to Ice Punch, then I'll just sub down to Blaze. Of course, if you thunder, if it thunderbolts and you just sub, then you've done nothing and you lose the matchup. But the point is that substitute gives you something to play for rather than automatically losing to ice punch and thunderbolt. So that's really and yeah, just uh, oh, and also abuses protect really nicely. You know, Swampert wants to see oh, this Charizard can't really punish me for protecting. I'll get some health. You know, I'll be out of HP grass range and you sub on it. That's really scary. So uh, it makes it it makes Skarm a little more hesitant. As well, so uh, sub is one of the best ways to punish protect, which is a move very difficult to punish. So it's definitely got a lot of merit on Charizard. However, its other options uh, are also unique and also merit consideration. So focus punch is also difficult because focus punch is difficult to use, you know, with or without sub because it doesn't do enough to Blissey. So you get stuck in these like weird scenarios where you know, Blissey's under half, but you can't really finish it off, and it's attacking you. So, and you don't want to switch and let it soft wield, but if you focus punch, you're afraid it's going to just heal it off. So, uh, that's where beat up comes in. Beat up is really nice because, uh, I, I should actually make a video dedicated to beat up. But, uh, the, the idea is that it takes the base attack stats on your team, on your Pokemon that are alive, not, that haven't been KO'd. And uh, it does a ton to Blissey. So Charizard's got a, you know, like even Pokemon like Suicune that aren't physical attackers, they still have decent base uh, attack stats. So with beat up, you're doing a ton to Blissey. So basically, this actually lets you uh, threaten to beat Blissey one on one. You know, maybe if it's Thunder Wave, then you don't like it as much, but it's uh, less risky than Focus Punch because you're, you know, slamming it no matter what. So beat up is a really nice tool. Uh, makes you less dependent on Dugtrio to get rid of Blissey. It's a nice lure, so it's a really good option for that scenario. Uh, it's not the most spammable move, of course, because, you know, if T-Tar comes in, they really don't care. But, you know, with Focus Punch, then you can potentially threaten those. Another coverage option is Dragon Claw, and this is big because, as we said, Moltres threatens Salamence, uh, who resists the Fire-Grass combo, A, with its power, B, with Will-O-Wisp. Charizard has neither of those. It's Fire Blast, yeah, okay, a minus special defense Mence, like a mixed Mence is not going to love switching into its Fire Blast, but at the same time, it's a lot less threatened by it. Uh, the nice thing is, is that most mixed Mence don't run Rock Slide, and therefore Charizard can potentially stay and slug it out, but at the same time, you uh, you don't threaten... And sometimes, a, a lot of teams that, that Charizard fits on, like those kind of mixed offense things, they hate mixed Mence. So they really appreciate, especially if they're running Breloom, like Undisputed's team, so they really appreciate the... Uh, the big damage that Dragon Claw brings. You really slam that. Uh, gives you something to hit Flygon with nicely as well. It's mostly an example of how Charizard could feasibly get by with Fire Blast, HP Grass. I mean, Fire Grass is uh, is such great coverage in advance as long as you cover for the Pokemon that resist it, like Salamence and Moltres itself. 
Uh, I should mention that uh, before Moltres and Charizard gained popularity, then one of the more common variations on Wisp Gengar was Will-O-Wisp, then Taunt or Explosion, and for its two coverage moves, UD used this a lot, it was Fire Punch and Giga Drain, or even HP Grass, because they hit so much super effectively, and you know, the few things that it didn't hit super effectively, then you could either burn, and or it would be hit by spikes. So, and now I think that set is, you know, just borderline unviable, uh, because I think Willow's Gengar absolutely needs Thunderbolt, simply because being a will o -Wisp Pokemon, you know, if you're a will o -Wisp Gengar, and suddenly you go from, you know, threatening Moltres and Charizard to being completely walled by them, I just don't think that's feasible. And that's a huge metagame impact that Moltres and Charizard have had. So, uh, that, th th there you go. I think that's a, that's a really big one. So, uh... Yeah, let me fix these IVs. Also, if you're using Beat Up, make sure your team has nicknames so you don't give away what your unrevealed Pokemon are. Yeah, so uh, there's Dragon Claw, and uh, some players, I think Triangles experimented with Brick Break, because simply because it finishes off, you know, weakened Titar and Blissey without the prediction reliance of Focus Punch. You know, I think it's worth considering. Um, but yeah, the, I, I did uh, want to get back to the original point, which is that. You know, yeah, they don't have super great move pools, but they their move pools are just enough for them to do what they need to do. And so I, I really have enjoyed the experimentation in the tier of the past several years. Uh, you know, giving rise to these Pokemon that previously were overlooked. Okay, so beat up Dragon Claw, Brick Break, uh, what else is there? Uh, Sub, we've mentioned, of course. Uh, I really like Overheat, simply because I think Charizard does need the power sometimes. And it's, especially, you know, if you're just going to launch an attack and then be forced out, then you, I think you may as well make it overheat. Really devastatingly strong with Blaze. Uh, so I think it's it's a great user of it, especially with the speed, you know, similar to Moltres. Because with the speed and Blaze, then it's a great move to have. It's a great move to just throw out. And uh, Toxic, I think, is really good. It's a little more prediction reliant, but, it, you know, it uh, hits non-refreshed waters. It can pressure Blissey. And uh, it pressures Blissey, so like you spam Focus Punch a little, and it's like, oh well, you know, you can you can attack, but then you're not healing, and you can you know mix in a Fire Blast. Yeah, you can talk and then just spam Fire Blast because it's you know taking damage, a lot of damage, no matter what, and then potentially other Pokemon that don't want to switch in to it will have to switch in. So yeah, Charizard threatens much of uh, the tier in the same way Moltres does. And, you know, Toxic is, you know, not great against Refresh Milotic. Charizard hates Milotic. Hates it more than anything else. But that's what your team is supposed to... Your teammates are supposed to be for. Yeah, Charizard fits on spikes as well. It's nice. Some players experiment with the Roar Charizard a la Moltres. It works. Uh, decent option, so... You know, and then uh, there, uh, there's other stuff. Oh, yeah, so the alternate Charizard goes the Pattaya Barrier route. Now, I am a huge fan of this set. Sub Sunny Day. Um... It's really, really cool. Basically, you run Fire Blast, HP. I think this is the you know most standard setup. Although it can it can go a lot of ways. You run the 30 HP IV for the Pattaya Berry after three subs, and uh, then you. I mean, there are a lot of options here. Look, Fire Blast, and then you can run Overheat or even Blast Burn, or uh, well, for the Sunny Days are anyway. Overheat or Blast Burn or even a flamethrower. I, I like HP Grass because it's consistent, and again, Fire Grass coverage is really big, but uh, it has options. I've used uh, Overheat and Blast Burn in my videos before, I'm pretty sure. And I also like Modest on this set, especially because this thing's power is so immense that it threatens even Blissey and Milotic. It's not, it doesn't fit on as many teams. It's more dedicated special offense, which restricts it as opposed to the standard, you know, Mixzard, which fits onto, you know, mixed offense and, you know, Spikes teams and you know, special offense alike. But, uh, it's, so it's more specialized, but it is really potentially dangerous. And the, uh, the weather support of Sunny Day is really nice. Uh, I used to have this team where I use Sunny Day support for, not for defensive Suicune, but for an offensive Suicune because of how much more dangerous it gets uh, outside of sand. You know, lets it take on things like Mence and Arrow a lot more easily. Especially once you've uh, taken down T-Tar, which you get Dugtrio for, and Charizard chunks it pretty nicely itself. So, yeah, this thing is, uh, this thing's really cool. Alternate Zard. And uh, Vapakuno had this set, actually, which I think is really cool. It's kind of a mix of both, uh, both Zards. So, uh, for this one, then, you, fo you try to Focus Punch Blissey on the Switch, 
and then you just spam focus punch and if it you know seismic tosses you down it knocks you into blaze and pataya range and then you just straight up ko blissey after the focus punch with your blaze pataya fire blast it's really cool uh or and you can even and of course uh subbing uh, you get down to blaze range and pataya range more easily with sub so you can do it actively or you can let blissey do it for you it's uh it's really cool so this is a very unique uh set a uh, unique twist on the sub punch Zard, just throw up a tie berry over lefties. So, so yeah, that's Zard for you. Uh, really, really cool Pokemon, and I think that covers uh, most of most of everything. And uh, oh, I, I will say its speed stat is really nice because yeah, you get that you get to compete with the crowded 100 tier. But even if you go plus special attack, then you outrun things like stupid things like Jolly Heracross, awful set. But y you're still going to be outpacing a lot of stuff, which is really nice. So I I'd really like that a lot about Zard. It's got a ton of options, but even more than Moltres. Uh, so you know the Moltres versus Charizard debate is really interesting. Some people are. Yeah, you know, I, I think most players generally agree. Yeah, but, you know, both of them are good, but they do separate things. But some players go, uh, Charizard is horrible, Moltres is the best, and others are, uh, others are the opposite. So, uh, if you remember that scene where in uh, Pokemon the Movie 2000 where Charizard and Moltres face off, oh, that gave me goosebumps every time. Still does, in fact. So that's... That's how I feel about Moltres vs. Charizard. I, I like both. <laughs> okay, so now Blaziken. Now, I'm going to refer you to another video yet again, and that's because uh, this actually perfect overlap with that fighting type video I made that I mentioned, because, uh, you know, Blaziken is a fire type of Advance OU, but it's also a fighting type of, adva of Advance OU. And uh, I don't remember because I haven't rewatched the video, but I'm pretty sure what I said was, you know, Blaziken, uh, you can look at it as a fighting type that has stab fire coverage for Skarmory and Metagross and Celebi, or you can look at it as a fire type that has stab fighting coverage for Tyranitar and Blissey. And, you know, that, that's the gist of Blaziken. Uh, it's a very good mi pure mixed attacker. So, of course... Uh, it's got its flaws. It's the slowest of the fire types we've seen so far, slower than Moltres. And uh, unlike uh, Charizard and Moltres, it's weak to Earthquake and Spikes and gets trapped by Doug Trio. And uh, yeah, so it's you know, and it's also vulnerable to Psychic, which sucks. However, uh, offensively, this thing is really, really dangerous. Just because stab, fire, and fighting. I mean, we talked about Charizard focus punching through, uh, you know, T-Tar and Blissey, and how that can sometimes be difficult. Blaziken doesn't need that. Blaziken has stab, sky, uppercut. So you just threaten out T-Tar immediately, and you've got that really nice... Uh, it's actually... Okay, it's technically the same... It's basically the same special attack stat as uh, Charizard, which is nice. Technically a little higher. So it hits really hard. And uh, there's actually not very much gained from plus speed Blaziken, in my opinion. I, I mean, you can. I, I think I actually went over that in... Uh, oh, that's my remix uh, background music playlist, which you can find on my channel if you're so interested. Uh, in the playlist section. Yeah, here. I, I probably went over plus speed or something. But yeah, I don't think it's worth it. I think the power of Blaziken is really nice. Uh, this speed uh, benchmark I chose was to outrun plus speed Vaporeon, but you can easily go a little lower and get some more oomph behind your sky uppercuts for a more instant threat on uh, Snorlax, Blissey. So yeah, uh, again, the it doesn't have an amazing move pool, but it has just enough to do what it needs to do. So you could realistically just go in with Fire Blast, HP got sky uppercut, and it'd still be an immense threat. So uh, yeah, Blaziken, again, fire uh, a stab, fire... Uh, a, po a fire type that can automatically threaten T-Tar and Blissey is huge, and a fighting type that can automatically threaten Scar, Salivy, Metagross, you know, Jirachi, that's also really big. Of course, you know, it's speed and weaknesses, you know, frailty to hold it back, but uh, another thing that Blaziken has over Charizard and Moltres is that it is not ca it is not weak to electric. So, like, Charizard and Moltres can take a Gengar Thunderbolt, but, you know, not well. And uh, they die to Zapdos and Jolteon. Whereas Blaziken, it can stay in. And like Charizard, it has Blaze. So you take that Zapdos Thunderbolt and you slam it back with a Blaze Fire Blast. Or Overheat. I, again, I really do like Overheat on uh, Blaziken. I think it's underrated. So uh, let's look at its other moves for that last slot. Sub is obvious. You know, Scout the Switch. And uh, 
And then there's Thunder Punch, which is unique because it completely ruins Gyarados and it hits, uh, you know, waters like Suicune, Starmade a little, little harder. Uh, I, I, I'm not crazy about it. I generally prefer Toxic because Toxic also hits Salamence while also hitting those guys. So I, I think if you're going to run T-Punch, you should generally try Toxic. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I said something different in this video. I wonder what it was. Over Yeah, Overheat Charcoal. I was, I was getting to that. I, I do think that set is really good, but... Uh, uh, that, that's Metacham. So yeah, those are the standard ones. I do think Overheat is really good, especially because Blaziken abuses... You don't use Blaze Kick, unfortunately. Uh, so I do think that it's, uh, it, it abuses Overheat consistently. And, uh, so it's not as, you know, great a switch into Metagross, because it doesn't have that great Earthquake immunity, but it can still, you know, pivot and threaten it out, and it threatens so much. So, so, so much. So, that's got that. Uh, and it's actually a really nice lead, too, uh, because it threatens out Titar and Metagross, who are really tough leads. It denies Skarm and Spikes completely, and with Blaze, and uh, I think if you're leading with it, you should go with Overheat, uh, and you should even consider Charcoal. Leftovers is nice to not get chipped down by Sand, and uh, uh, especially in conjunction with Protect, you know, when you're facing things like Skarm and Swampert. But I, I do think in the lead slot, if you're trying to go for that Zap Blaze KO, you should definitely consider Charcoal Overheat, just to really stick it to even the bulkier variants. And generally, you know, when you're spamming fire moves with Blaze again, you want to hit it stuff as hard as possible. Salmon switches in? Yeah, fine, give it Charcoal. Uh, and make it really sting, especially with Overheat, especially with Blaze. So I, th I do think that uh, I really like this set. I keep going to the remix thing. Yeah, so max speed is, you know, okay. I, I think some, it needs some oomph on its sky uppercut, but yeah. Oh, and you can also consider focus punch. I, I don't think it's amazing, but uh, if you're just, uh, uh, technically Blaziken can do stuff like choice band, uh, which is, that really treats it as more of a fighting type. Uh, you do cool things like you lure in Milotic, who thinks it's safe, and you slam it with a bandit focus punch, but it's harder to use. And uh, it's worth exploring. You treat it more as a fighting type that isn't threatened by... That really isn't threatened by the physical walls as much so you can uh, spam the f strong fighting moves a lot more easily. That's the idea of Band Blaziken. Uh, that things like Celebi and you know, uh, Skarmory and Gengar that would normally check it aren't going to be so good. I don't think it's as great since Salamence also checks you and you know, Zapdos to an extent. But, you know, it's, it's worth considering just because it's a great Milotic lore. Whereas uh, Moltres and Charizard cannot really lure Milotic effectively. So, yeah, I do I do prefer Charcoal Overheat the most. I think it's really good. And uh, again, I'll refer you to that video. And I think that's most of uh, what Blaziken wants to really consider. I don't think, you know, it's really good with Sunny Day or anything. It doesn't have the speed. But yeah, it's, it's very, it's a great, great Pokemon. You can, you know, drop that, uh, drop this a little more. Go down to, you know, this range-ish. For uh, the Cloisters that live, Starmie, Thunderbolt, and uh, getting the jump on defensive Zapdos and uh, Celebi and whatnot. Anyway, so yeah, that's Blaziken for you. Fire type that's also fighting, fighting type that's also fire. Very unique combination, and uh, it's a great lead. You know, being able to. So I mean, I, I know I've said this again, so I'll just repeat it one more time. Being a fire type that threatens T Tar and Blissey is so good. It makes it uh, such a nice lead because you could lead Moltres and Charizard and scare out uh, Metagross, but it would also be a bad lead because it loses hard to Zapdos and Tyranitar, whereas Blaziken can potentially beat all three, and that's really, really cool. Uh, I credit Zamok for that discovery of lead Blaziken. Uh, I think the charcoal overheat application I like to mess around with, it, may, it takes that to its most extreme, but yeah, you can also probably do stuff like Lumberry on it to absorb sleep and you know random paralysis. Uh, I would definitely consider that. Especially if you're running Overheat, because uh, Charcoal's boost is not that substantial, and Lumberry can definitely be a game changer. So, again, Blaze again has uh, room for experimentation, but its place is very unique. It doesn't have to be a lead, of course. It's good uh, mid-game, uh, but you really have to make sure you're good against Dugtrio, because Dugtrio is going to pick this thing off, uh, and you do have to be able to punish it afterwards, which is true of any Dugtrio weak Pokemon, of course, but Blaziken is super vulnerable, because, like, Titar and Metagross, they can EV to live it, but uh, Blaziken has no hope. Uh, one thing you can also experiment with is Salagberry, which I think it's a great user of, especially if it's getting knocked around by sand, and suddenly it's like, oh, well, now I can't outspeed it with my Starmie anymore. That sucks. So, you, uh, you, yeah. Uh, Blaziken is really, that ability to cut through traditional fire counters, you know, in Titar and... 
and uh, and Blissey. Oh, I should also mention Thunder Punch and Toxic are also good for checking Moltres for uh, crippling Moltres and Charizard, who are actually pretty good checks to Blaziken. So also worth considering. But then again, you know the power of charcoal boosted sand, overheat and sand also generally does a really nice job in that regard. So uh, yeah, you got Blaziken doing that. And, uh, yeah, so Blaziken is really nice because consider the standard big five team of Titar, Skarm, Gengar, uh, Swampert, and Blissey, and then a, uh, then a sixth. And those teams really hate switching into Blaziken. Just to be able to so viciously, easily, instantly threaten the big five of advance like that. The defining five of advance uh, that is, you know, unique and incredibly valuable. So... Yeah, I mean, we're talking instant. I mean, it Oko's even careful Max Skarm with Fire Blast always. So that's really nice when, you know, it's, it's a welcome change of pace from, you know, Skarm living Zapdos Thunderbolts. Anyway, you know, even invested Zapdos Thunderbolts. Anyway, so that's Blaziken for you. I think uh, I'll stop from repeating myself and again, refer to that video for further details. Now, Camerupt. Camera up is tough because this is, I think, where uh, you notice a significant decline in uh, viability. So Moltres is the best. Then Charizard is not far behind it, and then Blaziken's a little further behind Charizard. The gap between Charizard and Blaziken is a little wider than the gap between Moltres and Charizard, but it's still, you know, very good. And now with Camera up, actually, I should probably reverse it to be Houndoom then Camera up, because I think Houndoom is uh, we're going in order of viability, and Houndoom is definitely a little more viable in camera. So we'll start with Houndoom. So Houndoom is basically a Pursuit T-Tar on steroids insofar as it's got a much higher special attack stat, which means it really lands that trap on Gengar. It's also immune to Will-O-Wisp, I mean, even without Flash Fire. Some people like Early Bird because it lets it absorb like Venus or Sleep Powder better, but I like Flash Fire because it also means you are completely immune to Moltres Fire Blast. And, you know, boosting your own Fire Blast is very useful as well. So, I do like that. Some people really hate sleep, but I think, uh, and, and it helps you against uh, Hypnosis Gengar, dump set. But I generally do prefer the uh, reliability of Flash Fire, so. You know, your mileage may vary, depending. And I think you can also definitely make Houndoom a lot slower and bulk it out. Uh, you should definitely be investing in special defense to take those Thunderbolts, so, you know, let's give it the same special... It's got a really good speed stats, uh, close to, uh, close to Charizard. And in theory, you could go, you know, really abuse the speed, you know, uh, at speed like these Gengars, and still hit, you know, just as a, uh, you know, it's got the same special attack stat as Blaziken, but I, I do think, and um, even with Timid, you know, Houndoom exists mostly to pursue Gengar so that either you don't bring sin, well, we'll get into that for a sec, but the, the general idea is that even with Timid, you are effectively as strong as a mass, max special attack, uh, modest or plus special attack, uh, T-Tar, but I do think that you really need to make use of the difference of, uh, of its, of its, uh, special attack stat to really stick it to those specially defensive Gengars, so, uh, yeah, I, and you also really want bulk on it, you really want to pump special defense to take Gengar Thunderbolts, because it's not as naturally bulky as T-Tar, nowhere close, so you really need to invest to have those bounce off, so, uh, the last move, so, uh, before we go to the moves, I should also mention. So, uh, Houndoom, Houndoom's typing is really interesting. Uh, well, the fact it doesn't bring sand, that's one reason you could use it over Pursuit Tar. Uh, it's it's kind of like a Pursuit Tar that doesn't bring sand, but also has the offensive threat level of a fire type. So, I mean, you're really threatening Metagross and, uh, and Skarmory. And, you know, not bringing sand, some teams prefer to not deal with sand if they can help it. However, most of the time, you run Houndoom because you want to run a different Tyranitar set. And again, uh, just like Blaziken, Houndoom is viciously weak to Dugtrio, so you generally... But the thing is that uh, Houndoom's higher special attack stat makes it likelier that you pursue Gengar. Matter of fact, you actually almost want Sand with Houndoom uh, because it ensures that even specially defensive Gengar will almost surely be finished off by the Pursuit on the Switch or the Crunch. So, uh, you... You can consider that, and uh, you have to also consider some way of punishing Dugtrio. You know, some you might consider Porygon 2, or you just make sure the rest of your offense is consistently dangerous enough to really punish Dugtrio for trapping you. Uh, to make sure you can bring that endgame home if you're trying to win with DD Tar or something. 
So generally it's because you're using a different T-Tar, usually Dragon Dance. So uh, it's worth considering. I mean, being able to free T-Tar up to run a more threatening set uh, is definitely uh, valuable. It's not something you can stick on every team because it's an entire Pokemon slot and Houndoom's defensive utility can be kind of, you know, eh, given it's weak to fighting too now and it's so frail physically. But, however, it's defensive, uh, it does have defensive utility. Uh, I can't say it doesn't. Because that dark typing also means uh, it's an incredible counter to Celebi. It's a really, it's a great switch into Jirachi as well. Uh, completely blanks a lot of Superachi variants. You know, Calm Mind T-Bolt is you know, scarier, but you can, uh, you're definitely really good against most Jirachi and Celebi. And you threaten with Fire Blast and Will-O-Wisp. Will-O-Wisp is another really great move in Houndoom's arsenal. So, uh, we know how tough it is to switch into, given, you know, the lack of fire types in OU, only Moltres. So, uh, and with Crunch, you mean, you uh, make it so that Moltres doesn't... I, I do like Crunch on Houndoom, you know, you could say, oh, you don't really need Crunch to seal the deal against Gengar. I, I think it's worth considering, at least, because it also makes you more threatening to Claydol, means you can actually threaten something like Bulky Starmie. Uh, bulky Starmie is something that EVs to live uh, uh, T-Tar Crunch plus Sand, but with Houndoom, again, you push that issue. Uh, I personally like to experiment with Black Glasses on Houndoom, just to really get the most out of those Pursuits and Crunches. It's harder to make use of because, yeah, the Sand and, you know, you don't have Blaze that you're subbing down to, but it, the power is worth it. Of course, Leftovers is also great, and Salagberry is really nice on Houndoom as well, make it more of a threat. Uh, so, Will-O-Wisp is also somewhat negotiable. Uh, it's just generally a default just because of how great a move it is and how it completely cripples things like uh, Salamence and T-Tar, that thing they can set up on it, but it's got a lot of options. I think Roar is an underrated option. You can uh, drag thing. Like, if you're confident there's no Duxtro, you can Roar and then drag in Gengar and then completely ruin it. You know, you don't even have to switch into it, you d therefore giving it room to, you know, double switch out. You drag it in and then you trap it immediately. Uh, you can do things like Dragon Metagross and then Pursuit it. Houndoom is unique in this regard as well because, like, those fire, those uh, Pokemon that you threaten, like the Jirachi, Selby, and Metagross that you threaten with your Fire Stab, you can Pursuit them. I mean, it's most significant for Selby because people uh, like pairing Houndoom with uh, Breloom because Selby counters Breloom and Houndoom is a very good uh, Selby Trapper. But... At the same time, then you just, I mean, being able to pursue Metagross for a big chunk is really, really nice. So, I mean, that crunch hits really hard. So, uh, other moves. Roar. Roar is great. HP Grass is an obvious choice to make it threatening against Swampert. Uh, and what else does Houndoom get? It gets beat up. So you can, you know, really ruin Blissey. It's, uh... <laughs> It's got a lot of really cool tools to use, and it's got a very... So, again, we're... It, it, this is a bit of a step off in terms of quality, because Houndoom is really more specific in terms of how it fits on teams, and it's you know, less of an immediate threat, and its weaknesses are really, really exploitable, but it does have a lot of really nice tools. So that Pursuit Trapping, that very unique blend of defensive utility, uh, I mean, that Moltres countering, that, you know, Jirachi and Celebi countering, that Gengar countering, really, really unique, and Pursuit Trapping is really nice, Beat Up, so it's, again, it's kind of like a Pursuit Tar mixed with a Fire type, uh, with a, it's a Pursuit Tar mixed with a Beat Up Will-O-Wisp Fire type, so it's got a lot of really great qualities, uh, it takes a lot of really great qualities, uh, of, different fire types and m mashes them into one Pokemon that also comes with a really meaty pursuit. I think it's got the strongest pursuit in the game. I uh, can't imagine anything else that's stronger. So, uh, yeah, so that's what Houndoom does. Uh, remember, pump that, pump that special defense. You know, consider Salic Berry to really ensure you stick it to Gengar and maybe you'll be able to escape Dugtrio. So, yeah, th those are, uh, it's got a lot of great options, does some really cool stuff. Uh, I haven't seen Taunt used to good effect, but, uh, yeah, Overheat is always, always an option in case you're just trying to... I think Houndoom is the worst user of Overheat of the four Pokemon we've examined so far, uh, simply because of the utility that those other, those other Pokemon bring, so I, I would generally not bother with, bother with it. I think, besides Fire Blast and Pursuit... Uh, you would generally, I mean, technically, I'm sure you could just bluff your way through a couple of games without Fire Blast, but I, you know, 
because Pursuit is the only move that really makes Houndoom Houndoom, but you gotta choose between Will-O-Wisp, Crunch, Roar, HP Grass, Beat Up, that's already a lot of really good Pokemon to be choosing between. And uh, it gets Solar Beam, uh, something else that Solar Beam is not a, either it's not a TM, uh, either like Will-O-Wisp it's not a TM, or just these Pokemon don't learn it. Whereas, you know, uh, every Pokemon learns, uh, every Fire type it seems learns Solar Beam in Gen 4 and onward. But yeah, Moltres and Charizard don't get Solar Beam, and, uh, yeah, there's Blaziken. But I don't think Blaziken gets Solar Beam in general. But yeah, uh, Houndoom gets it, so in theory you could do some Sunny Day Solar Beam stuff. However, I don't think that's an efficient use of Houndoom. I would generally prefer, if you're gonna Sunny Day, uh, Moltres or Charizard are gonna do it better. I think, uh, you know, I, I guess you could do, like, a Pursuiting, will wisping Sunny Day kind of thing on Houndoom. But if you really need to cram all that utility into that slot, like on some Magneton, Donphan, Houndoom team, uh, but at that, at that point I would just probably just use uh, the combination of Bulky Umbreon for the Pursuit and then uh, Sunny Day Moltres. I mean, yeah, Houndoom crams it into one slot, but less less of a good thing overall. So, uh, yeah, I would, uh, yeah, so Houndoom's got a lot of really cool stuff. I hope to see it explored more in the future. So, that's, that's what Houndoom does. Now, Camerupt. Now, Camerupt is tough. Camerupt is unique because it has a lot of really, really great, completely unique uh, traits. So, uh, by virtue of its typing. So, what that typing does is, it means it's immune to Will-O-Wisp, sure. But, you know, all these other fire types are immune to Will-O-Wisp as well. However, they are all vulnerable in, you know, to varying degrees to Gengar's Thunderbolt. I mean, that's why uh, Houndoom has to run special defense EVs. Because otherwise, it is threatened by repeated Gengar Thunderbolts, especially with Spikes Down. Gengar's just completely immune to them. And uh, additionally, it doesn't care about Gengar's Ice Punch. It doesn't care about Giga Drain or HP Grass. Doesn't care about, and definitely doesn't care about Fire Punch. So it's a, as hard a Gengar. It's not even weak to Focus Punch. I mean, Focus Punch Gengar is kind of stupid, I think. But, but even if you could say, oh well, Focus Punch Gengar blows by Blissey and Titar and uh, Houndoom. Well, it's also hard to fit into a functional set. But point being, yeah, well, Camera. I, okay, it doesn't like switching into Focus Punch because of bad defense stat, and you're forced to go mild because uh, of the physical special split uh, and the nature of its stabs. But at the same time, you. You're not even weak to Focus Punch, so you can, you know, switch into it. So, uh, you, that is also valuable. And what that Thunderbolt immunity, HP Grass neutrality, and Ice Move neutrality also means is that you completely counter Electrics. You just stuff uh, Zapdos and Jolteon and Raikou. I mean, yeah, Toxic is annoying, but it's not the end of the world. And it's not like Camerup is purely a defensive Pokemon either, because its stab combination is really, really dangerous. I mean, Fire Blast, a Stab Fire Blast, and Stab Earthquake, that's great. Now you have, uh, you, you kind of are like Blaziken in that you have a stab that T-Tar doesn't want to come in. T-Tar and Blissey don't really like switching into. So, and, uh, most unique of all, you have Explosion. So... You can, you know, if that bulky water, like that Milotic is walling you, just blow it up. So, it's really cool. So, the way Camera is generally being used is, uh, Blanking Gengar and Zapdos is really good because they're so difficult to deal with. And, uh, it's Sand Immune. That's another huge thing about Camera Uh, it heals in sand. That's so, so, so good. So, I mean, you switch into Gengar Thunderbolt with Spikes Down, and you start healing with Leftovers. Whereas the others, then, you know, you switch into a Gengar Will-O-Wisp with spikes, or you switch into a Gengar, uh, you're not healing, is the thing. Uh, even in Sand, you're only ever staying at the health you are at. That is, if you're even leftovers. And Camera Up, it starts healing. So that's really, really valuable. Makes it hard to just wear down, uh, passively. So, and, uh... Offensive teams really love the traits that Camera Up brings because being able to stuff Gengar and Zapdos is so valuable so that your Snorlax doesn't have to deal with them. You can preserve your Snorlax to check other special threats like Calm Mind Sweepers, or you can just make it more of an uh, offensive threat. You can go all in on that knowing that you have Camera Up to deal with it. Alternatively, you can just use Camera Up to you know bust open a hole because it's such a dangerous wall breaker because it's got great stabs and explosion. 
and by virtue of its stabs, normal types, or sorry, normal resistances don't like switching into it because steels don't like switching into fire, uh, rocks don't like earthquake, and ghosts, well, you know, Gengar, camera switches into Gengar and threatens it with fire blast, so it's not like, oh, well, let me blank this camera explosion with Gengar, that's easy. No, that doesn't really happen. So... Uh, the exception, of course, is Aerodactyl, and we're getting to camera up's issues. There's a reason it's ranked the lowest of the five so far. So, uh, yeah, so adding another boom to an offensive team is really nice. So you free up your Snorlax and your Metagross uh, a lot in that vein, you know, providing this temporary stopgap to these dangerous threats that are really, really difficult to stop. Their options for dealing with them are, uh, you know, really limited. So you really like that. But while it can occasionally be really, really good, it's it's just so inconsistent overall. And uh, we'll go. so now that we know what camera up does well, you know, it's stuffs Gengar, is Aptos, and uh, it it threatens a lot. It's a good wall breaker in return. So it's got some good defensive offensive utility, right? That's that's what you want out of uh, you know these kinds of Pokemon. So okay, let's let's examine what camera. Up Camera Up's failings are really more on the defensive side. I mean, it's not perfect offensively, but it, yeah. So, uh, look, Camera Up is a check to Gengar and Zapdos that is just hopelessly destroyed by Dugtrio. Now, Houndoom is the same. It's a check to Gengar that's destroyed by Dugtrio. However, Houndoom can at least trap uh, Gengar. That's the big thing. At, so you can you know punish Gengar for just like yeah okay I got Dugtrio but I also took out their Gengar so worth it. Camerupt with Camerupt uh, you can still extract some value out of it even if you're facing a Dugtrio as long as you like blow something up before you get a chance to get Dugged and Dug doesn't exactly love coming into Camerupt freely so you can still threaten stuff. Uh, but you know the fact that Baton Pass Zapdos has never been more common means that you kind of ought to, you got to be careful about switching camera up into uh, Doug so so freely so uh, camera up into Zapdos rather so I mean you have to definitely walk be careful it's what makes it less consistent but I mean yeah Blaziken Houndoom are also Doug Trio vulnerable so however the difference is Houndoom's got its pursuit Blaziken's got good speed and uh, that great secondary stab and it really threatens a lot instantly camera up's low speed means Oh, it's it's really hard to keep playing. Oh, we're at the end of the playlist. Okay, well, back to the beginning then. Okay, so camera up's speed is oh, it's it's rough. so yeah, camera up is definitely the most inconsistent of these five, uh, just because of how easily it can just go horribly wrong. So, uh, and there's also the issue of putting together a good camera up move set. Now, you c with these other Pokemon, you notice, you know, you can put a, you can just put two, three moves on them and they still be good. And with Camera Up, you know, no matter what four moves, I mean, yeah, you could say Fire Blast, EQ, Explosion, but, you know, it's got, it's got those flaws and it really, they are significant. So, look, EVing it is a really big issue. I mean, with these other Pokemon, you really don't have trouble EVing them. I mean, you might have to make a choice on Charizard plus Special Attack versus plus Speed, but, I mean, it's not really tough. And it's not really a tough choice to make. Or uh, rather, it's not really a debilitating most of the time, if you know what you're doing. Whereas with camera, no matter what you do, you are going to really you know, be strapped for something. You really want that max special attack because it's got the perfect special attack stat to always OCO careful Skarm, even with minimum damage. That's why it's got the max special attack. So, and you'll also, if you're running a hidden power in the last slot, you'll want that power as well. So... Problem is, it's so painfully slow, you really want attack EVs as well. Because one of the worst things about Camera Up is that T-Tar is actually kind of a check to it. And it's so slow that you have to... Uh, it's a problem because it's O-Code by and it's slower. I mean, yeah, okay, T-Tar can also kind of check Moltres and Charizard. But they can, they're also faster than it, so they can at least threaten it. They can hit it twice. Whereas Camera Up, you know, not so lucky. You know, you either hit it on the switch, and, you know, maybe you, you gotta hope it's slower, which is why it's EV'd uh, this much. But it's so naturally frail, and its attack just not sufficient enough to where... You know, Blaziken doesn't run a ton of EVs for Sky Uppercut, but it doesn't need to. It's already naturally strong enough against its targets to where it doesn't really need that investment. Whereas, Camera does really need it. Uh, 
and it can't really run as much as it'd like, nor can it run enough special defense as it'd like, because yeah, it's neutral to Gengar's Ice Punch and Zapdos' HP Grass, but it needs investment to not completely topple over to them. So you need to fit attack, you need to fit special defense, and you need to fit speed, and, alongside a hefty special attack investment. I'm, look, I'm not saying this is the final camera up spread, this is just something I was tweaking uh, yesterday, but... It's, uh, it illustrates the struggle of putting together a, a good camera up. It's really tough to do. So it's so slow and otherwise, if you don't invest in speed, then you're going to gain even more checks than you already have naturally. You're going to get outsped by minus speed and neutral variants of uh, things like Swampert, Titar, Metagross. Uh, you know, you'll be at low health and you'll be getting outsped and finished off by Blissey and minus speed Claydol. So even max speed isn't guaranteed to fix all those problems against, you know, many variants of Per, Titar, Metagross. The sad thing is, is that uh, neutral camera tops out at 179, so you're not even getting into the semi-crowded base, uh, not base, just uh, 180 speed tiers, which a lot of T-Tars and Metagrosses and Skarms and Blissies and Swamperts tend to run around in, uh, even some Clay Dolls. Uh, but you can't go plus speed because, I mean, what did we say? Camera up star for power as is, and you, you take away from that for a very minute advantage you know it's not like i mean it, it sucks because being outsped by those guys yeah that blows but you know even outspeeding something like uh t-tar doesn't necessarily fix the issue because camera up is so frail and so vulnerable to earthquake that you know, t-tar pivots into fire blast and eats an earthquake and then earthquakes you back and you're like okay that's fine at least you didn't blow up my uh my blissey or my water or my mence or my zapdos you know i would take that absolutely i would so that's what makes camera up really rough. It, it wants to boom on stuff that it can't always boom on. And uh, the fact is that even with plus speed, you reach 196, which is so sad because it doesn't even outspeed zero speed Milotic. So, and that's another problem with camera up. It's so prediction reliant because it's so frail and so vulnerable to so many things that you really have to be on top of your prediction game. And that's what makes it so tough. I mean, you want to be, you know, HP icing the ments on the switch if you have HP ice. And then T-Tar comes in and it's like, well, that was a good move because he resists everything but Earthquake and even Earthquake doesn't exactly Oko him. So you really have to predict like a maniac to get anything out of camera up and even then, it's not guaranteed to uh, necessarily work, depending on a lot of factors. It's hard to make it consistent. So, and I mean, you really need that attack investment, because otherwise... I think zero attack camera has less than a 67% chance to KO max HP TZR through lefties. And even these 32 attack EVs, it's some, like something like 94 point something to 2 a KO, which is, you know, a lot better. But, I mean, the fact that it needs investment for that, really, you know, when it needs investment for so many other things as well. This outspeeds uh, minus speed Metagross and zero speed T-Tar, by the way, which is, you know, you're missing out on things like minus speed Claydol, but I, I, you have to draw a line somewhere. And I thought that was the most significant one, because that also gets a jump on uh, bold Swampert. So, or a uh, neutral zero speed swapper, so. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, those are some big targets. And then the choice of HP grass versus HP ice versus toxic is a tough one as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so let's say you have a perfect balance of all these EVs, and even then, you're just going to be so crippled by that prediction reliant nature. Uh, and, you know, you, if you. You know, even just switching into a Gengar Ice Punch with some spikes down means, oh, you're more pressured to explode quickly to get something out of camera up before it goes down. And, you know, there's something similar if you're fearing Doug Trio, like if it's an obvious special offense team. And that makes it easier to uh, predict around the explosion and absorb it with, you know, a Steel or a T-Tar or, you know, God forbid, Gengar. So, or a Protect, of course. So, it, it, it's, it's tough. Now, look, camera up can be really useful. Uh, I remember the first time it was used, it was uh, SPL4 Finals. It had never been seen before in high-level advance, and Danilo just pulled it out in this huge game and won with it. Uh, it didn't really check Gengar's Aptos because it wasn't facing them, but it, you know, just the explosion itself, it's such a strong move that sometimes... That reminds me, I have to make an explosion video as well. Um, yeah, it's such a strong move that you just... Uh, that it can go a long way. I think it like Oko to full health Snorlax, which was crucial for winning the game. So... That's why it's so, so big. Uh, you just... It, it can be useful. However, it's tough to make consistently useful. I mean, no one's denying its defensive properties are really nice and that it can turn them into potentially threatening offensive properties. As, and it can use these defensive properties to find opportunities to launch its dangerous offensive assault. It's just it's hard to make it 
consistent just because of how difficult EVing it is. <laughs> and then, you know, picking a moveset and then, you know, the prediction reliant nature of using it and the fact it's so easy to naturally check between Mence and, and all the waters and T-Tar and, I mean, even, uh, God forbid there's an arrow. Uh, it's rough. However, Gengar and Electrics is, is a great set of Pokemon to check. And it can be really threatening. I mean, Explosion on a Fire type is just net, great no matter what. So, and of course, Stab EQ is nothing to sneeze at either. So, uh, I generally prefer Toxic for the last slot. Hits Mence and Waters and Moltres and, you know, even Arrow all in one. So, I do think that's generally the best uh, last for Camera Up. I don't think Overheat is really... I, I mean, I guess if you're just trying to spam fire and get out, but I think Toxic is generally reliable. It, it is a good user of Toxic because no poison immunes want to come into it. We've already established Gengar doesn't like staying in on it. Uh, it, it switches into Gengar, rather. Uh, something like Weezing doesn't want to take it, you know, and the other poison type, Venusaur, obviously doesn't want to take it. And then Steel's, you know, hate both its stabs, so generally it's Toxic is probably going to connect with something. Oh, and also, uh, if they're trying that T-Tar pivot stuff, then you can, uh, you can toxic that as well, which is useful. So, yeah, I generally prefer this set for Rupt. Uh, it, it, I hope to see experiments with, uh, and oh yeah, some people like Quick Claw on it, just because you get, uh, you have that 20% chance of just totally BSing Doug. It could feasibly work on uh, Blaziken as well. Uh, and, you know, if there was a Pokemon that could use Quick Claw because, you know, leftovers don't make enough of a difference, I guess it's Camerupt, especially with Explosion. That is really nice for, like, booming a, a Salamence or a Suicune or Starmie by surprise. That would be pretty incredible. But I, I generally think Leftovers is uh, best. So, yeah, Camerupt is definitely, definitely feasible. <laughs> um, it breaks my heart that it's not so good, but it, it's, uh, it's tough. So... Anyway, this it is uh, one of Advance's five defining fire types, though. Uh, you know, like when you think, oh, what are the fires that make up uh, Advance's pantheon of them? Then you go Molt, Zard, Blaziken, Houndoom, and Camerupt. I mean, it's the worst, for sure. But you also... Uh, but it, it has its niche. And its niche is very, very unique and uh, merits exploration. Okay, so you notice I said five, but there's a sixth here, Flareon. Now, I don't think Flareon is good, and, and I don't think, uh, you know, there are little niches like how Arcanine has Howl and Extreme Speed and Intimidate, and that's cool. And uh, Entei can do uh, Calm Mind, uh, Sunny Day, Solar Beam, and that's cool. You know, it's like a Calm Mining Fire type is cool, but its special attack is just so low. And, and Speed is cool, and, but I just don't think Entei has the move pool for it. It's too tough to pull off reliably, so I don't, I don't think Entei is worth it. And then there's uh, Typhlosion, who's just a worse mix of Charizard and Blaziken. I mean, it's got the speed. I mean, it's got that uh, neutrality to uh, Thunderbolt, and it's got this... The Blaziken neutrality of the Thunderbolt and the Charizard speed, but it's also... It's just not worth it. Charizard has its other qualities that make it worth using, like the Earthquake immunity and... Uh, and... Uh, Blaziken has its stab fighting, so just don't use Typhlosion. And then, I don't know, anything that's in NU. Uh, Magmar is definitely not worth using. That's just a really bad Blaziken. And, uh, yeah, so I would not use... Oh, wait, this is all UU, sorry. So, Magmar's not worth it. And, you know, Mag... So, uh, Basket in my Discord server, hashtag shameless plug, uh, has been messing around with Mag Cargo because it has Flame Body, which punishes things like Double Edge. But it's it's really it's a it's a gimmick, unfortunately. Torkoal's no good either. So, anyway, Flareon, I don't think it's good. But some people have been messing around with it in recent months, and it's a counter to Moltres that has Wish, and I says I, I think it's a worse Blissey. I think it's absolutely a worse Blissey. But some people like it, and it, it actually got used in SPL. So it uh, I'm obligated to put it here, lest I am met with uh, angry protests that I ignored this burgeoning metagame development. But yeah, I think everything Flareon does, Blissey just does better. But, you know, people enjoy it. So, uh, yeah, if you if you really want to use Flareon, I would recommend trying out some Flareon stall in uh, UU or NU, where it's actually good. But I do not recommend Flareon in OU. But, you know, maybe, maybe I'm missing something. I mean, I guess it doesn't fear Focus Punch... Or, uh, or beat up the way... Bli Actually, no, its defense has miserable. I mean, it's no Blissey, but... Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't fear Focus Punch the way Blissey does. Uh, it's, it, but it's so 
totally ripped apart by Doug, and it's just... It's so bad against so many special threats. It can't handle waters. You know, bad against just a simple Zapdos. Can't handle, you know, Calm Mind, Jirachi, or Selby at all. Yeah, just skip Flareon. I mean, Blissey gets Wish, too. It can Toxic. It can even use Fire Moves if that's so important. And, I mean, it's... it's yeah, it doesn't rely on two-turn recovery, which is super exploitable because it can run Wish and Softboiled, which is amazing. And it's just a much better Pokemon overall, so yeah... But, I mean, if you want to, you know, mess around with Flareon Ladder and just have some fun, then yeah, go nuts. It'll counter Moltres and Charizard, and and I guess it's pretty decent against Blaziken, I suppose. Uh, so, it doesn't counter Camera Up, though, because of Earthquake. So, yeah, those are the fire types of Advance, mostly the first five. So, uh, I hope this has been informative for you. I'll try to stop uh, myself from repeating myself. Uh, the videos I referred to, they are linked in the description below, and you can check those out. For further references and as always if you are looking to see advanced tournament action then I recommend using the Smogan forums and going to the tournament section and then the Smogan Premier League section and then in the Smogan Premier League sub forum then there are several replays threads spanning the course of several years and over the course of those several years if you go down to the advanced games then you will stumble across some fire types so uh, it's mostly Moltres Charizard but you know there's occasional uses of the other of uh, Blaziken, Houndoom, Camera. I mean, barely any of Blaziken, Houndoom, Camera upt, but uh, Ch Moltres and Charizard are a good chunk, especially Moltres. So, and uh, one of Flareon. So, all right. So that's everything for me. I think I covered everything I need, wanted to. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope uh, this shed some light on for you on the unique place fire types have in the advanced metagame. And uh, yeah, I will catch you next time.